Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Knights. I'm a consultant anaesthetist working at Aspati Gwynedd in Bangor. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short video that will explain about your anaesthetic for your joint surgery and hopefully answer most of your questions. In this short video, I will go through what to expect from your meeting with the anaesthetist, your choice of anaesthetic and your pain relief afterwards. You will be re reviewed in our pre-op assessment clinic and some of you may be asked to see an anaesthetist as part of that pre-op assessment. All of you will meet your own anaesthetist on the morning of your surgery. It is helpful if you've already thought about what type of anaesthetic you would like and that's part of the purpose of this video. Who are anaesthetists? Unless you've had surgery before you may have never met an anaesthetist and may not really know what they do. Anaesthetists are specialist trained doctors. They have undergone as much specialised training as the surgeons. We are primarily concerned with your safety and comfort throughout your surgery. We are involved in assessing your fitness for surgery and some of you may meet an anaesthetist for a detailed review before you are booked for your surgery. You will meet your own anaesthetist on the day of surgery. This may be a consultant anaesthetist or it may be a trained anaesthetist who is not yet a consultant. They will be very competent but may still be undergoing some supervision and assessments. Your anaesthetist will talk to you about your medical history. They will discuss your anaesthetic choices and agree an anaesthetic plan with you. The risks may be different for each person according to their medical problems. The anaesthetist can provide advice on what type of anaesthetic may be better for you and what your own individual risks may be. They may strongly recommend one type of anaesthetic because they feel it would be better for you. Our goal is to make the surgery as safe and comfortable for you as possible. The final decision about your anaesthetic will be yours. We will never make you have something that you do not want. What happens on the day of surgery? Well, you'll be given instructions about what tablets you should and shouldn't take by the pre-op assessment clinic. Most of your medicines we would prefer you to carry on as normal. Some medicines, such as warfarin or other blood thinning treatment, will need to be stopped in advance and you will be given clear instructions on this. There are some blood pressure medicines, like atenolol or bisoprolol, that we want you to have as normal if you are already on them. And some blood pressure tablets, like lisinopril or ramipril, that you will be asked to stop just on the day of surgery. You will also be given instructions about when you should fast from. You can eat up until midnight on the night before your surgery and you can drink water or clear fluids up until two hours before your surgery. If you do not know what time your surgery will be then drink clear fluids and water as much as you would like up until seven o'clock in the morning. You must not have food or milk or fizzy drinks or fruit juice containing pulp after midnight the night before your surgery. A clear fluid is basically something that you could see through if it were in a glass. You can have a black coffee or tea or some dilute squash instead of water if you prefer. A very small splash of milk in your tea or coffee and a teaspoon of sugar is accept acceptable if you can't go without. If you are having squash please try and dilute it so that it looks like one of these in the picture. You will also be given a pre-med tablet to help with pain after your surgery. You may continue to have sips of water right up until the time that you come to the operating theatre. When it is time to come round to theatre, you will walk around to the theatre reception or you will be brought on a trolley. In theatre reception, you will be checked in. You will be asked some questions multiple times, including confirming which side has been operated on. The reason for this is that we have multiple levels of mandatory safety checks. After the checks, you will then come round to the anaesthetic room. There may be more than one anaesthetist, sometimes a specialist trainee who is not yet a consultant, and there will also be an anaesthetic assistant or ODP, and an orderly who will help with positioning. Monitoring will be attached to, in order to monitor your heart your oxygen levels and your blood pressure and you will have a cannula 
which is like a plastic straw, placed into a vein. This is regardless of what type of anaesthetic you have. If you're going to have a spinal anaesthetic, you will then be sat up and positioned ready to have this. So I'm now talking about the types of anaesthetic that you will be offered. Broadly speaking, there are two types of anaesthetics. A general anaesthetic is when you are asleep and unconscious, and a spinal anaesthetic where your lower body is anaesthetized, but you can be awake. First of all, I'm going to talk about the spinal anaesthetic. Most patients at our hospital having joint surgery will have the spinal anaesthetic. and We believe it is a nicer experience and usually the better option in terms of overall comfort and experience. It is not a painful procedure to have the spinal anaesthetic. You will be sat up in the anaesthetic room. The back is washed with antiseptic and then numbed with local anaesthetic to the skin. The anaesthetist will put the spinal injection in your lower back and a small amount of anaesthetic is injected into the spinal fluid. After about 10 minutes, you will be numb from the waist down and not be able to move your legs. There are some benefits to the spinal anaesthetic. First of all, you are wide awake and comfortable straight after your surgery. You will be able to eat and drink sooner. There is some evidence that there is less risk of sickness, of blood loss and of blood clots. However, these risks are not eliminated completely. As with all medical procedures, there are some side effects and potential complications. For a spinal anaesthetic, the main risk is that occasionally we cannot find the space and we cannot complete the spinal anaesthetic. If we cannot do a spinal anaesthetic, then usually there, there will be a ch change of plan to a general anaesthetic. The anaesthetist will always communicate this with you if this happens. The other risks to a spinal anaesthetic include low blood pressure, which may make you feel dizzy or nauseated, mild itching, and there is a small risk of headaches afterwards. Approximately 1 in 200 people can get headaches after a spinal anaesthetic. Serious complications like nerve damage are very rare. Permanent nerve damage is extremely rare and in the order of 1 in 20,000 to 1 in 50,000 cases. A patch of numbness that can last for some months is still rare but can occur in up to 1 in 2,000 cases. The anaesthetist and assistant will be supporting you and talking to you all the way through the spinal anaesthetic procedure. Your safety is always our main priority. If you are unhappy at any point, or if you feel pain or feel sick, then we want you to tell us so we can help make it better. The spinal procedure itself takes about 10 minutes. It is done under local anaesthetic. It is not painful and is usually less painful than having the intravenous cannula. Once the injection is done, you will lie down on the table again, and it will then take about 10 minutes to work fully. Another advantage of the spinal anaesthetic is you do not have to remove your dentures if you wear dentures. Once the spinal anaesthetic is working, we will test it with a cold spray to check that it has worked. The anaesthetic will have numbed the nerves and the cold spray can tell us how well it is working. If you cannot feel the spray as cold, then you will not feel pain in that area. We will not go any further until we are 100% confident that the anaesthetic is working sufficiently. Very rarely, if it is not working, we may need to repeat the procedure or we will go to plan B and offer you a general anaesthetic. We will always talk to you about these options and what our recommendation would be. Just to stress, however, this is a rare scenario and less than one in a hundred. Before we then move you into theatre, we will position you on the table for your surgery. If you are having a hip replacement, you will be turned onto your side, with the side being operated on being uppermost. During the surgery, we stay with you, making sure you're comfortable and monitoring to check you are okay. You will not feel any of the surgery or see anything. There will be a drape in front of you to separate you from the surgery. The surgery is quite noisy and this is what some people don't like and that is understandable. If you are anxious we can give sedation until you are nice and relaxed. We will be monitoring you all the way through and can adjust the sedation as necessary. With sedation you won't be completely unconscious and you may remember some things afterwards, 
but you won't really care about what is going on. Some people are fine without any sedation, and if you would rather not have sedation, that is fine too. Just let your anaesthetist know. It is also fine to change your mind during the surgery if you want some sedation. You can also listen to music, chat, or just have a little sleep if you like. We may wake you up now and again just to check on you. Some people like to listen to music during their surgery. Unfortunately, this is not something that we can provide, but if you have your own device for playing music, it is absolutely fine to bring. MP3 players like iPods or personal CD players are fine. Unfortunately, radios or anything that relies on internet Wi-Fi signals will not work in theatre because of interference to the signal. If you don't like the thought of any of that, and you really just want to be completely unconscious throughout the surgery, then you can have a general anaesthetic. This is just as safe and will not put you at any significantly higher risk. A general anaesthetic is where you are put to sleep with intravenous drugs and kept unconscious throughout the surgery. During the anaesthetic, the anaesthetist will place a breathing tube to maintain your airway and attach you to a ventilator to control your breathing. A general anaesthetic does not provide pain relief in the same way, so you will usually be given strong pain relief like morphine. You will be unconscious throughout the surgery until the anaesthetist turns off the anaesthetic at the end. Then, when you are waking and breathing for yourself, the breathing tube will be removed. Sickness, drowsiness and pain are more common initially after the surgery. It is also common to have a sore throat after a general anaesthetic because of the breathing tube. Serious complications to a general anaesthetic are again very rare. They include a severe allergic reaction to one of the anaesthetic drugs, or damage to your teeth from the airway instruments, or breathing problems after the anaesthetic like an infection on your chest. Whichever anaesthetic type you choose, the anaesthetist will stay with you until you are in recovery and look after your well-being and comfort. Our main priority is always your safety. Now I have spoken about some of the complications of anaesthetics and I would like to stress there are risks with everything. Even driving to the hospital has a risk involved. But both types of anaesthetic are safe and the risk of major complications are very rare your anaesthetic team are highly trained to look out for and manage any complications and they stay, stay with you all the way through. I've talked about the risks that are common to everyone. However, risks will differ for each individual person according to their medical problems. You can ask your anaesthetist about serious complications if you wish and they will be able to give you a more personalised assessment. Your surgery can take up to an hour and a half. Immediately after your surgery, you are taken to the recovery room where you will be closely observed by specialist nurses to make sure there are no immediate complications and that you are comfortable and recovering appropriately. I'm now going to talk about some of the uh, pain relief medicines that you will have. Now, unfortunately, joint replacement surgery, especially knee replacements, are painful. As much as we would like to eliminate all pain, that is not realistic there will be some pain after your surgery and it's going to be sore for a few weeks. Our aim is to help you manage this pain with the help of strong painkillers so that you can do your exercises, that you can walk, that you can dress and then you can sleep well at night. If your pain is not controlled, your progress will be delayed and that may stop you from going home. It is important therefore that you speak up and tell the nurses if you need more strong painkillers. This is the system we will use to grade your pain and you will be asked to keep a diary of your pain. During the surgery you will have some local anaesthetic injected around the joint by the surgeons which will help reduce the pain for the first day. You will also get some regular paracetamol and most people will have some anti-inflammatories and some opiate we use a long-acting oxycodone tablet. Oxycodone is similar to morphine. Everyone is different and everyone requires different amounts. You may find that the amount that you've had is not quite enough and you still have some pain. 
you will be able to take some extra short-acting oxycodone, known as Shortec, if required. If you have a little bit of pain and you know that you are about to do some physiotherapy or exercise, it is a good idea to take some extra painkiller about half an hour to an hour before the exercise so that you have some stronger painkiller ready. There are also some other medicines that you'll be given to reduce the risk of complications, such as anti-sickness medicines, laxatives to prevent constipation, heparin to reduce blood clots, and antibiotics for reducing infections. That's the end of this talk. So just to summarise, your anaesthetic team are there to help you, and whatever your concerns are, please discuss them with your anaesthetist. Your anaesthetists are highly skilled doctors who are responsible for your safety and comfort throughout your surgery. Thank you for listening.